Hey, this is Todd McClues and the Growth Minded Podcast. Thanks for tuning in for what is the fifth episode. We're focused on entrepreneurs, business leaders, and their collaborations that serve as catalysts for the new economy in Wisconsin and the surrounding region. I've been fortunate to meet a number of founders and entrepreneurs over the past few years, and this particular episode features one of my absolute favorites. I was introduced to Randy Spaulding through the Family Business Legacy Institute, and I've yet to meet a person who's so filled with belief and passion about his family, his company, and the mission they serve. Randy has spent the vast majority of his career designing, manufacturing, and bringing cardiac care devices to market. He worked for Michael Cudahy at Marquette Electronics. He then went to GE Healthcare and Mortara Instruments. Until 10 years ago, he and renowned cardiologist Dr. Jay Mason formed Spalding Clinical. They're a clinical research outsourcer up in West Bend, Wisconsin. They work with pharmaceuticals around the world during all stages of the drug approval process, and they're the best in the business when it comes to cardiac care. We know that because they win industry awards seemingly every year. The ingenious solution that separates them from the pack is this little device. It's called the Spalding ECG. And the story goes, Dr. Mason and Randy called their engineering team into the room for a meeting one time. And they said, build us a 12 lead heart monitoring device with all the functionality of a cart based ECG, but make it the size of one of the cart's wheels. That challenge resulted in this device, and that has evolved into what is now a separate early stage company called Spalding Medical. Cloud enabled, it runs on any platform. I've seen Randy demo this thing at Carnivore right before a steak showed up on the table. This, an iPad, and full 12 lead data was flowing within seconds, and we could have had a cardiologist overread by the time dessert arrived. It's the best product demo I've ever seen. I only tell you that story because Randy and I spent four and a half hours together in the studio and we've served up the best 21 minutes for this episode. The thing we really wanted to focus on is how the guy's wired. He's truly passionate about the mission they serve, but he doesn't let that get in the way of reaching logical conclusions. He's a true contemplative. I hope you can walk away after the next 20 minutes seeing what we saw. And I hope you enjoy the show. Um, I think I told you the story of uh, when I was a kid at uh, Marquette Electronics and we'd go to trade shows and you'd see the competitors, you know, checking out what you have and uh, Mike Cudahy would see them and he'd real enthusiastically invite them in, say, all right, Randy, show them everything you got here and go around the booth, show them everything, tell them everything. And at first I was taken aback because I thought, Really? I thought you were yeah. supposed to protect this, hide right. this. And they'd leave, and he'd make a comment like, look at him, he's going away with his tail between his legs. <laughs> he, that, that is one demotivated competitor right now because they know they can't beat what we have. Yeah. I love that. And we've talked before about the genesis of the, of the business and talk about Big Leap of Faith, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So how do you compare the two, you know, that, that – thought about this really needs to be done and I'm the, I'm the person to do it or we're the team to do that versus here we are at this stage now where we, we've gotten to this plateau of revenue or that 25 million range, but boy, that's not where we want to end this story. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to take some more risks, right? How do you compare mm -hmm. those two levels of risk? <laughs> um, they're both, uh, they're in some ways you can argue the more current, you know, the, Growing from B to C is even scarier because there's more at stake. Mm -hmm. You have a whole family of people behind you that are counting on you yeah. to, you, you being the team, yep. to bring us to the next level and certainly not to take us in the wrong direction. So there's, that wasn't there as much before. It was, you know, the five, the seven, the 10 of us. Right. Now there's, you know, 150, 200 people behind you counting on it. Yeah. But just the confidence kicks in and says, I, but I, we have it. We, we have the, the tools. We have the people. We have the product. We have the capabilities. We have it all. We just got to go execute on it. It's, so that part is easier because early on we had nothing. You know, we right. had the idea. Right. We didn't have anything implemented. Yeah. So I would say in the end they kind of, I, I think they net out. Um, a lot of 
more risk Sleepless because of the number nights. of people involved now, people you feel responsible, some level of responsibility yeah. for. Yeah. But less risk because you kind of know where you are, how substantial the business is, what what it took to get there, what it takes to get to the next level. Yeah, and right? to argue from a as a 10-year-old company versus a 0-year-old company is so much easier. It's it's better mm-hmm. that way. So mm-hmm. I think they net out though. That's interesting. The um one of the things that I really enjoyed in our last conversation uh, had to do with the core values, the pillars of the organization. Mm-hmm. I, I just think that uh, the level of sincerity that you have around those, the mm-hmm. level of commitment you have in, in terms of making a part of the daily execution within the company. Yeah. Can we do that conversation again in terms of oh, yeah. Um, yeah. How, you, how you came to understand that those were the pillars that you needed to implement at Spalding and what they mean to you? Sure. Happy to. This is – to me, number one, ab- above even just what we were just talking about, because I think in the end, if people are motivated and aligned, it's when you just see them do incredible things. And I, you know, when you start a company, what do, what do you have? You have your experiences, mm-hmm. and you go back and you say, okay, what what really worked for me? Yep. And I'll go back to the my Cudahy Marquette Electronics experience. I saw people not just I was very on fire, very motivated, but I saw all these other people too. And it wasn't perfect, you know, it wasn't Nirvana or anything, but it was good. It was good. We all were aligned. We were all motivated. Uh, and and then I had some other experiences where I saw that no people are just counting down the minutes to get out the door. So you come in with that, and you try to replicate what you saw worked. And um, as I told you then, I, I think uh, the, the aha moment for me, or the moment when it all came together, is I went off on a uh, three-day silent retreat, and I was given this book um, called Heroic Leadership, Christopher Lowney. Just fabulous. It, I, I dove in. It was one of those when I'm reading it, it's just clicking, and I'm saying this is it. And I, I think if Mike Cudahy had read it, he'd say, yeah, that was like what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just resembled what I experienced. And it was you know, a little more articulate about it. Sure. Um, and so out of that came these four values, these four pillars that we would build um, our company around, and there's a foundation underneath it all that says, you know, we're going to build it on trust in people, to the in the good of people, in the talent and the skills, and in finding those and enabling those to come out. That lot, that's when magic starts happening, and so I came out of that. Three day weekend, I came home. I talked to my wife. I said, you, I, "I had, I'm a highlighter guy, so you know." And I had little stick it, stick, sticky uh, tabs on all these pages, and I was just going page, page. Saying, look at this! Look at this! Look at, look at this! This is awesome. This is what we got to do. I wrote the mission statement that weekend. Hmm. Um, talked to our marketing. Folks at the time said it's got to be right on our wall as you walk in our building, and which it is, and, and it is, and it's <laughs> it's beautiful, and um, and I I think in the end our success today, it's it starts with people, it always does, and it starts, you know, we're not perfect, <laughs> we have we have issues, we're human beings, all as uh, I like to quote someone, I don't know who said this, but, you know, we're ordinary people that together do extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. That's what I I think this enables. And I have yet to meet a single employee that has said, you know, I'm not, I don't like your values. I don't like what, what you stand for as a company. I have yet to meet a single customer that would say that. Yet, on the flip side, I've had, and I'm I'm not exaggerating in saying probably 60, 70, 80 employees come up and verbally say straight out, I love this. I love these 
values, they're pillars to build something off of. I'm all in. So now it's just more of how well do we execute on it? I pay attention to detail still, how I look, how I dress. I'm a suit and tie if it's a customer. But I remember when I was a kid and I even as an engineer, I was brought into a sales meeting and I didn't have a tie on. Mm-hmm. And Mike Cudahy grabbed me and sent me home. Is that right? I said, go get a tie and don't come back till you have a tie on. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I, I had a jacket and, and a you know, button-down shirt, but I didn't have a tie. Yeah. Go home. Now, you might call it old school and you, know, and you might say, Depends how is that solving setting. their problem? I still think there's a level of, I, it's a level of respect that says, you know, okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to give you that respect I'm going to be on top of my game for you. I'm a, not, you know, not only in my dress, but how I'm prepared. I think what it's saying is I'm thinking everything I can about you. Uh, if I have a tie and I'm not prepared, I'm going to lose. Yeah. So, but if I'm prepared and I and I have a tie, I have a better chance of winning all the way around. And I just, it's just probabilities. And you want to uh, show respect and, prepare, and preparedness and importance. This meeting is important. So I'm still old school that way. But in the end, I can do all of those things. But if I'm not solving their problem, if I'm not making them look good in their organization, then the chances of them coming back to me become very small. Overall, I mean, the overarching thing is we want to get to the why of why we are in existence, why our company matters. Why our people matter. Yeah. And I'd love for all of our employees to understand the why. Let's talk about that a little bit. So is this coming out of a Simon Sinek uh, reading or book, or is this something that's been a theme for you for a long time? Uh, I'm, that's what, for me, that's what creates passion. If I know why I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. If you just tell me to do it and I don't know why, I'm just, I, I get Board pretty easily. Mm-hmm. But if you tell me why I'm doing it and why what I'm doing is important, my role, I, something kicks in me and says, okay, I got to do a good job at this. This is important. Like, we do this to help our, I say this often, our grandparents, our mother, our s- children, our siblings to have. Drugs that we can trust are safe and helpful and effective for them. So we just finished two years on a hepatitis C drug. We were one part of a big cog, but no one was the whole cog. It mm-hmm. just It's made up of many of little parts, and we're one of them. And I'm damn proud of that. And that's the why. I, I, I have family members, friends, extended I've talked to, that have suffered from hepatitis C. We have an employee whose father just passed away from it. It's very that's a very real thing that that inspires some heart into what I do. Some, and I think that's the key to unlocking people's passion. Mm-hmm. It means something. It's not just I'm showing up and I'm doing my eight hours and I'm going home. If I'm going to spend so much time of my life working, why not have it mean something? But if we can do something that helps people, when we take our device and, you know, now we go to a nursing home and we say, you know what, if you have a patient who has chest pain, tell them they don't have to go. You don't have to call 911. Mm-hmm. You can take an ECG. Okay, that means one. that's one level of passion for me. You want to take it to another level? I might have shared this with you, but I'll tell you about my mother-in-law who had, was very ill and was living in our house at the time and got so excited for my son's birthday party. And it was everything to her. She built this up for days and days. She's a wonderful lady, cared much, deeply about our children. So she's, the big day comes, she's sitting at the, on the couch, and tough lady, little tears coming down her eye and, I went to my wife and I said, you might check on your mom. Something, something's up. Goes, talks to her and comes back and says, she's having chest pain. 
and she doesn't want to say anything because she knows as soon as she says something, she's gone, right? I translate that to, I mean, that makes me sad. That that makes me tear up because I love this lady. It's a tough lady. For her to even shed a tear was, you know, meant she was hurting. Mm-hmm. Think of the thousands, tens of thousands of people that are going through this. They know instead of being where they want to be, maybe with their grandchild or some event, they're going to be getting poked. They're going to have strangers coming around and talking to them and asking them questions and more pokes and more pokes. And then they're going to have to spend the night in a place that they don't want to spend it. I'd cry too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sad. Why not do something about it? That's the, the why that's the reason behind the reason we do it. Okay. We open up a business. We do it to, to create jobs for the community. I like that already. That gets me up, you know, as opposed to just saying, I just show up. No, I'm here to, Grow a business for a community to create good paying jobs. Hey, I'm in. Light my fire. Now say, and beyond that, you can actually do some good in the world for people, for your your mother, your father, your your grandparent. You know, what a gift. If we're going to spend all this time working, make it worth something. And that's where I, if People, if every new employee at Spalding Clinical could catch that, could understand that that's what we're really about, and it's not perfect, and it's good, there's going to be, it doesn't mean every day is, you know, high five and dancing days. There's going to be a lot of drudgery and a lot of real work. Yeah. But in the end, if you can walk away and say, you know, this is good. This is, this is better than flipping burgers at McDonald's, you know, or, or whatever. Um, I'm actually well, having there, an impact it's better than almost anything you could be doing. Yes. Right? And you're impacting globally too. You're impacting right. people globally. What a what a thing of our age we couldn't say 100 years ago, right? Yeah. So easily, but we can say now. We're impacting people globally every day and to have that opportunity, you know, I'm getting of the age I've worked a lot of jobs all the way back to being a paper boy when I was a little kid and then Foundry work in high school and then lawn care and um, God knows all the odd jobs I could do to just make some money. Those jobs, you know, they're great and someone can find joy in them, but I, I find great joy in health care particularly. But, you and, spent the most or all of your career there, right? Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I could feel, I, you know, when we made electrocardiographs, Still to this day, I'll go into an ER and my mom will say, hey, do you or my dad used to always say, do you have the Marquette or do you have the cheap shit? You know, <laughs> and they have to answer one way or the other, right? Put them on the spot. My dad was proud to say that. And I, I, I think that is a, um, a wonderful gift to be able to work and then to go one level deeper and say, we want to create a culture that's unique in that we can, we can also, dare I say it, you know, care about one another, love mm-hmm. one another, love what we're doing, take it to that level. Now you're bringing something. And I was fortunate at Marquette Electronics to experience that. I, and I didn't realize then that there were people working their asses off. My, you know, maybe the more experienced ones that were now in the leadership, I didn't realize what they were doing how they were sacrificing so I could experience this. Mm -hmm. Now I do. Now it's my turn. It's, you know, it's our leadership team's turn to create, help build the foundation for an environment where they can have a a thriving culture of can-do spirit, heroic ambitions, loving care for each other, Um, not this... uh, you know, run when there's a problem because it's not my problem. It's their problem. It's their, but instead embrace it as an ingenious solution. Watch me, watch me do this. Let me show you what I can do kind of attitude and being aware of what are the weeds that hold me down and what are the things that lift me up and maybe, you know, maximize those things that lift you up and take some time every now and then to do the pruning and get rid of that habit or that 
tick that keeps you from growing. Yeah. We have an opportunity to create an environment like that, a culture like that, but it takes everybody. Everybody's got to buy in. It, it's not just me saying these words, but know that I'm, I'm, this is the most important part of what I do yeah. is help foster that. The next layer of that as a founder of a family owned business, you've now included that next generation in the business, right? Can you talk a little bit specifically about the why yeah. and what you just shared yeah. and how that's furthered with your daughters in the business and I'm sure you're coming I, up Thank on you for bringing that up. There's, I'll say there's two things to that. Number one, I say this often, but I, I, it, it, is, it is a gift for me personally that for many, many years I left home, I worked, and from the time they were little – my daughters would look in the window and wave goodbye. Sometimes they'd cry because I'd leave, you know, and they're younger and daddy don't go. And I'm like, Oh man, you know, killer stuff. Right. Yeah. And you go do that for so many years and now to turn it around and they're there and then to watch them grow and thrive. It's just a gift to me personally. Yeah, In the culture that you're creating and yeah. fostering. Right? Oh, it's, it's, it's on a personal level. That is a great gift to me, but, the second piece is uh, my, it's just part of this. There are, uh, everyone else in the organization becomes part of our family. It's, mm-hmm. it's inevitable. You're spending so much time with them. So when I'm looking at people, I'm not saying family member, not a family member, family member, not a family member. I'm saying you're all family. Yeah, of course. You're all, and, and I can then derive, I mentioned it before, this thrill of watching someone grow from this role to five levels up that they never dreamed and have them come and say, I never thought I could do this and they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I want to be very clear, you know, it it becomes a whole family. The culture we talked about before is a family culture. It's, I mean, honestly, when we go home, that's how, you know, we're free to love each other. We're free to, um, help each other with self-awareness and critiques in an honest, productive way, so on. We're free to think big as a family. Same in our business. So I can't help but look at them as family and think of them as family. And that's why you, you hurt when they hurt, you know, and you rejoice when they rejoice, mm-hmm. right? And you see them so excited about something they did. And I, I'm the first guy to say, well, Hell, let's go celebrate. Come on, get everybody together. Let's go. We got to go celebrate. This is great. That's how I, I feel. Same with if someone's hurting, you know, and you have this happen. Someone gets, finds out they have cancer or someone loses a family member. You just, you know, your heart breaks and you, you're right in there with them. I, so I want to be, it's, it's a, you know, a subset and a superset yeah, of course. that encompasses that subset. So, yes, for me personally. What father wouldn't be proud to watch their own children that used to cry when you'd leave to go see them every day for my, that's my job Mm -hmm. to go work with my kids. This is awesome. (laughs) Um, But then to extend that into a larger sense of this culture, we talk about and these values and to have this mission to make a difference in the world and not just be punching clocks and, going through motions, but to feel like I'm actually making a difference. I, I am all in. This is, this is what I care about the deepest because it comes back to that a high performance company, as we were talking about earlier, it starts with people and it starts with people caring and being passionate about what they do. It's an incredible message. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks again for the time. You bet. Thanks for joining me for the conversation with Randy and join us next time when I talk with Wayne Breitbarth, one of the true LinkedIn gurus in the country who happens to be from Milwaukee. Wayne's energy level and some of the things he's done to involve himself within the Milwaukee community are worth paying attention to. The Growth Minded Podcast is available on iTunes and SoundCloud. The video version is on YouTube. And if you subscribe on SoundCloud or YouTube, new episodes will just end up in your playlist. Until next time, I want to just say thanks again for tuning in and take care.